We're now going to do motion problems, but we're going to emphasize the ones that involve motion of a boat with or against the current. So we'll start with you're on a river, and we have a boat. Here's my boat, and there's the rudder, and the boat's going to go in this direction. On the boat, we have a gauge, and that gauge is the speed. So I'm going to call that gauge. That's going to tell us the indicated speed of the boat. But in this situation, we have a river, and there's going to be a current. So in this first situation, we have the current of the river, and then we've got the indicated speed of the boat. So we have the boat that it was, will be going at a certain indicated speed. We have the current of the river, but there's going to be what's called the actual speed. And the actual speed is as if we're standing on the shore looking at the boat, it's going maybe at a different speed than what's indicated on the gauge. So as an example, suppose I tell you that the current is three miles per hour. And we look at the speed gauge, and we see that the gauge shows zero. In this particular situation, a person standing on the shore would look out, and they'd say, well, it looks like the boat's going three miles per hour. So the actual speed is zero, the indicated speed. But when I'm looking, the, the river's moving at three. So the actual speed is three miles per hour. But now let's look at another example. Suppose we look at the gauge, and we see now that the speed gauge shows the boat is moving 15 miles per hour. A person on the shore, the actual speed would be 15 miles per hour, but we're seeing also plus 3 for the current, so the actual speed is 18 miles per hour. In this example, this is an idea because we're going with the current, we would say when we're going with the current, we're going downstream. So we would write that the actual speed downstream is the indicated speed plus the current. And this is the actual speed, the downstream actual speed. Now we'll look at the example where we still are on the river. The current is still going in the same direction. But now we have the boat that's moving in the opposite direction. The captain looks and has the indicated speed dial. So we have the indicated speed. And as an example, let's do a similar example. Suppose the current is still 3 miles per hour, but now we look at the speed dial, or the captain looks at the speed gauge and says, now it's only showing 15 miles per hour. A person standing on shore looking out at the boat will see the boat, and it won't look like they're going 15 miles per hour. The actual speed will be less. So in this example, the actual speed will actually be 15 miles per hour, but then the current's working against you, minus 3, so it's only 12 miles per hour. So now, for this one, we can say that the actual speed, which is upstream, is indicated speed. But then the current's moving against us, so we're subtracting the current. These two are so important that they're worth memorizing. Now we'll do an example. So here's 
one where I tell you the rate of the river's current is five miles per hour, a boat travels 12 miles upstream and then turns around and tra travels 32 miles downstream. The time for both routes is the same. And then we're asked what is the speed of the boat in still water. For this problem, we have to interpret what we mean by the speed in still water. Well, that would be there's no current, so that's going to be the same as the indicated speed, whatever's on your speed gauge. To do this problem, we're going to set up a nice table arrangement. We're going to have three columns and two rows and we're going to have rate times time is distance. We know that if we know the speed times the time you went at that speed, that's going to give you the distance. And in this particular problem, we're going to have downstream and upstream. When it comes to rate, we're talking about the actual speed. That's what we mean by the rate. First thing we can do before we put in any values is recall that the actual speed, which is the rate downstream, and I'll put down, is the indicated speed plus the current. And we know that the actual speed, the rate upstream, the rate up, is the indicated speed. But you're going against the current, so it's minus the current. To do this problem, we're going to put what the indicated speed and the current are. We're looking and this says, what is the speed of the boat in still water? We know still water is the indicated speed. We don't know what that is. We're going to call it x. But we look here and it says the rate of the river's current is 5 miles per hour. So 5 goes in for current. Looking at what we have, we know that the rate downstream is indicated plus current. That's going to be x plus 5. Now the rate upstream, it's very important, we always start with indicated. That's going to be x minus 5. Now looking at the problem, we see that the boat traveled 12 miles upstream. So the distance for upstream is 12 and 32 miles downstream. So the distance is 32. We now have two columns, and this is how all these problems are. Now you'll be able to fill in the missing column. And since distance is rate times time, I can get time by itself by dividing by r. So I divide by r, and that tells me I will get time. Time is d over r. So I can now fill in the time column, d32 over x plus 5 and 12 over x minus 5. This will be for all of these problems. You're going to have that time column and then you look to the problem to see what is it about the time downstream and the time upstream. And here it says they are the same, so you will make them equal. So our equation will be 32 over x plus 5 equals 32 over x minus 5 because they were equal time. Thirty two over x plus five equals twelve over x minus five because it was equal time. This one is easier to solve a nice shortcut when you have two fractions equal, you can just cross multiply. They're two proportions. Thirty two times x minus five equals twelve times x plus five. And we distribute the thirty two through thirty two x 
minus 160, 12x plus 60. I can do this in one step by subtracting 12x and adding 160. I get now 20x is 220. Dividing both sides by 20, I get x is 11. So what that told me is x was the indicated speed or the speed in still air. So it was 11 miles per hour in still water. Now this works for this problem because in this original problem I told you the time was the same. But suppose I had in this problem the same table entries. I had rate, time is distance, and downstream I had x plus 5, upstream I had x minus 5, we had 32 and 12, and we had for time 32 over x plus 5 and 12 over x minus 5. But let's say there was a variation and I told you that the total time that it took for them to go 32 miles downstream and 12 miles upstream. Suppose I told you it took a total of 10 hours. In this situation, if the time isn't the same, if it's a total, it would look like this, and my equation would be this. 32 over x plus 5 plus 12 over x minus 5 equals 10. Now, because the total, I would be adding the two. And then I would have to get a lowest common denominator and proceed to solve that. And I'm writing etc. I just ad lib this one so we don't know if it will work out nicely with nice factoring. But that's what it would be if they said total time.